What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown and I have in my hands a police body worn camera along with the companion mobile application over on the desk. They are communicating data back to China. Not only that, they're communicating it in a way that can be intercepted via a man in the middle attack. We are going to go over that all in this video before we jump into it. My name is Matt Brown, as I said, and I am an IoT pen tester, bug bounty hunter, and I love sharing knowledge with you on this YouTube channel about hardware security. So if that is something that is inter interesting to you, please, hit that subscribe button and let's jump into it. Let's go over to the workbench and take a look at this device that we have right here. So uh, we can see that this is kind of, you know, your standard uh, form factor for one of these body cameras. And uh, we got a power button here. So we're gonna go ahead and power that bad boy on. And so you can see there that, you know, uh, well, yeah, we got a camera. You can you, you know you can hit the record button up top, and then it'll start recording. Uh, it's kind of hard to see there, and I can hit that again to stop recording, and so on. And the way that we get data off of this, well, there is an SD card, so like that is one of the ways to get your data off. But the more convenient way is via the Wi-Fi hotspot that this device hosts itself. There are actually a number of things about this device that are not so insecure and one of them is that this wi-fi interface is only active when you put it into wi-fi mode so we're going to do that right now and we're going to show you how the data transfer takes place try to zoom in and get as good of a view as we can so we're going to cycle down to wi-fi and then we got to hit this button is like to select and then we're going to go to on and then it puts us in this mode where we're gonna see an SSID and a WPA2 passphrase, which is kind of like a weak default, but I gotta give them credit because they are actually using encrypted Wi-Fi and not open Wi-Fi, and you can change this passphrase in some deep in the settings. Uh, they do give you that option. So uh, we're not taking off any points so far. This is all actually not bad. So we're going to go over and take a look at the mobile application and how we can sync that up with uh, what we have over here uh, on the desk. And so we're going to first, we're going to actually go to our internet settings and we're going to connect to that SSID. Now, this is not going to have internet access by design, right? Like there's not another wireless access point on the body camera where it actually has an internet connection. So it's gonna say this, it's gonna say, oh, it doesn't have internet, whatever. So we're gonna launch the app and then we're gonna connect into the camera and we can see there that, you know, let's look around at the live view on the camera and we can go to the camera files and we can download them off of the device, right? So it's populating all these images and then we can hit download. And then we can download the images onto our phone which is nice and convenient to do over the wireless interface. Nothing wrong so far. So what we're actually gonna look at today, the main way that this whole ecosystem gets itself into trouble is when it reaches out to the internet. And like we mentioned, the device itself is not reaching out to the internet. This, this is a common pattern in some IoT systems where maybe the, the IoT device, the smart device, will be some battery powered device. Maybe it'll just run Bluetooth, in this case, Wi-Fi, but it's not really connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Um, so it uses the mobile phone to kind of act as a proxy to get it out to the internet. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And uh, whatever, we don't need to download this whole file. Um, I've got files downloaded already. You get the point. So. What we're gonna do is we wanna see what's going on when we actually flip this back over and give it actual internet access. So uh, yeah, we don't need that camera anymore actually. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set up our solution that we've talked about in this channel before for intercepting traffic on IoT devices. Uh, and we're gonna use it for our phone in this case. And that is man in the middle router. If you haven't heard of this, this is a system. This is not some genius system that I've, de I've designed. I'm really just taping together different Linux open source tools to create a platform that we can capture traffic from any Wi-Fi or Ethernet based IoT device. And so 
very high level description because I've done this in other videos. We have IoT devices over here. They connect via Wi-Fi, host APD, open source, Linux router software, or your straight up ethernet interface. And that connects to BR0 or the bro interface. And on that interface, it's a bridge interface. It connects those together. And then we're gonna ignore this for now. Uh, it sends that traffic out to the internet connection. So your computer has to have two, at least two interfaces, right? You Like if you're using a Wi-Fi device, you don't need the ethernet interface. If you're using the ethernet interface over here, you don't need the Wi-Fi, but it's nice to have both. Uh, but you do need some kind of other interface on your computer for the setup to work that has actual internet access. And so that's what we have here. And then I said, ignore this. We're gonna talk about it now. So optionally, optionally, uh, so it, in this setup, we can run Wireshark right here, right here on this interface, and we can sniff traffic that's going out. I didn't describe this. D, uh, DNS mask, DHCP server gives the IoT device an IP address. That's it. And then optionally, we can, uh, so we can sniff on the bridge interface. And then over here, we, can write some IP tables rules to say, hey, like that one little bit of traffic, I actually want to send that somewhere else. Maybe I want to send it to a program that will attempt a man in the middle attack. Foreshadowing. So let's do the setup, but without any interception. So what we have over here is we actually have that already set up. So we are running my little script here. And uh, you can see here the SSID for my network is labnet, Man in the middle, Wi-Fi password, too many secrets. Uh, best hacker movie of all time, reference there. If you haven't watched it, go and watch Sneakers. Uh, yeah, so, and then down here, I have commented out a bunch of stuff, and that's all you need to know. There's no active man in the middle going. We're just gonna sniff traffic, and so we're gonna run that, and then Wireshark's gonna get mad at me because I went down and up on that interface, uh, on the bro interface. So we're going to start sniffing again this traffic and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our phone and we're going to connect up to our labnet man in the middle uh, access point here that's being hosted by our program and it's going to like hopefully actually connect okay it didn't now it did that's great all right and then we're going to try to get rid of that and we're gonna, we're gonna relaunch the app. And then we're going to go over here in Wireshark and we're going to see what traffic is moving between our mobile phone and the internet. And we can see right away some very interesting traffic going on. So, uh, so definitely some Chinese sounding uh, domains and subdomains going on here. So uh, we have some communication to some kind of a map API. Uh, hosted by Baidu, uh, so obviously Chinese company there, Chinese hosted server. Uh, and then we have this API server, which is really gonna do the heavy lifting for this application. All the application specific things are gonna go to this API server. And uh, so this, this is interesting. There's a lot of traffic going on here. And, I, and there's another thing I wanna note is that some of this, so let's go to the Baidu communications here. Let's look at the port. So the port is 443. That's pretty standard TLS communications is gonna run on port 443. But this these API communications here, uh, if we do the same thing, we look here, is actually going to destination port 9091. That's an important thing for us to note when we wanna do our man in the middle attack because we're, we're gonna have to redirect not only port 443 traffic, but also the 9091 traffic as well. Good thing to know. And then we can just confirm here really fast uh, that like, okay, so this API server, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here's this public IP. We'll go ahead and copy that value out and then we'll go, uh, let's just go up here. Let's just run who is real fast. And we can see that this is in fact hosted by Huawei, Huawei Cloud Data Center, which is in China. So uh, we're just confirming that the data flows are going outbound to China. It's not using some kind of a US-based cloud server. If, you in, if you're in the United States, things like that, the data is going to China. Now, 
let's dig into it because we can't really see much of what's going on because this is using TLS, encrypted pipe between end-to-end, uh, -end, between our phone and the cloud servers back in China. I want to see what kind of data is actually being sent on the inside. Well, that's where we move to this, this part right here. We have IP tables rules, man in the middle proxy, and then we're going to add an even, an even another layer onto that just because the interface can be a little cumbersome in man in the middle proxy. So we're actually going to use Kaido, our HTTP proxy, as an upstream uh, for man in the middle proxy. So let's get that all set up. So first, we need to do some uh, writing of IP tables rules. So again, this is just a script taping all of this open source tech together. And so what I have here, if you if you clone this repository, you're not going to have as many of these rules, but you're going to have, you're definitely probably going to have this one in there. And so here, uh, this could seem complicated, but this is pretty simple. What we're doing is we're running IP tables, which is a, a you know firewall tool in Linux that can move traffic around. You can you can tell traffic, hey, don't go over there, go over here. High level, high level overview. But on that bridge interface, the BR0 interface, we're going to look for TCP traffic with the destination port of 443, and we're going to redirect. We're going to tell it to go somewhere else locally on our machine to port 8081. And that's where we're going to run the man in the middle proxy tool to attempt to terminate that TLS communications. We're going to pretend to be the Chinese server. And, and, and we're going to pretend to be that to the mobile application. The mobile application will think it's talking to the Chinese server, but it's not. It's talking to us. And we can see inside of those encrypted communications. And then, like we talked about, we're going to have to do the same thing for this oddball port 9091. So we go ahead and save that. Uh, we run it. Wireshark, once again, is going to complain. So we're going to restart our capture here. And now we are going to go to the app and we're going to relaunch it. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 No, no, no. First, we need to get man in the middle proxy set up. So we're actually going to use man in the middle dump, which is, is the same tooling as man in the middle proxy. But instead of having this terminal interface, it just prints it out on, on the command line here. So uh, much more rudimentary, but that's fine in our case. And we're going to use it in upstream mode where it's going to send HTTP data that it captures to port 8080, which I happen to be running, not over there, over here, I'm running Kaido. And so we're gonna actually gonna, just to show you that I'm not like cheating, we'll delete all this data out of here from my last run. And we're going to uh, intercept data in man in the middle proxy or man in the middle dump, and then it's gonna send it to Kaido. So we're going to run that command. And then over here, we're going to run the app. And then we're going to start seeing all this data getting decrypted. OK, so we're starting to see inside some of these communications. And you'll see that some of them we do not successfully man in the middle. So up here, we can see some communications to, okay, to blank. Uh, that's not helpful. Oh, here we go, uh, AG. So some kind of G, some kind of like, you know, GPS service that Google has here, it's failing to uh, connect to that because the client does not trust the proxy certificate. Duh, it shouldn't be trusting our random CA certificate that we're signing all these certs with. But for all these communications that this specific app is using, it trusts it all, right? The API server, we can see inside all those comms. Uh, actually, some communications to Google that is being performed by this app, not performing certificate verification at all, um, that API server, the Baidu maps servers. Uh, so this is all super interesting. And so now we're going to go ahead and we are going to look at that data right here, because here we can see inside of Kaido, we can see inside of the HTTP communications. And so uh, let's go up to like some of the first uh, requests that we got here. So I'm going to go to the login request and you're going to get to see my password in clear text, guys. All right, here we go. My super strong password for this very serious account I have, password one. All right, pretty good password. 
That's a great password in my opinion. There's my email, so be sure to send all your spam to this email account, not my other one. Uh, and so you can see here the authentication. So you hit login and then you get this like J session ID uh, here. And so there's a bunch, a bunch of API communications about the device. I want to show where, okay, there's a couple really interesting things that are being logged again to these Chinese servers that are able to be intercepted. Now, now why would we care about that, right? Okay. If you haven't studied the Chinese, the Great Chinese Firewall before, I would suggest going and reading up a little bit about that because what has been known to happen at the edge, right? It's, it's, it's the way that China, China controls what traffic can come in and out of the country on the internet. And one of the things that they're known to do is to attempt to do the very man in the middle attack that we're doing right now at the edge of their internet service providers for things going in and out of China. And so this, by, by this app being vulnerable in this way, it just lets that inter interception happen way easier. Obviously, if the Chinese government wanted to, they could go, you know, over here to, you know, we looked at the who is request, right? They could go to Huawei's cloud data center and they could be like, hey, give us all the data, right? But why do that when you can just, you know, you can just, you know, intercept this TLS communication and have all the clear text data right here. So um, let's go and dig through some of the stuff that it's sending back. You can see that it's sending my phone's IMEI number. So this is a test phone. So don't get any ideas, you guys. But uh, you can clearly see that, you know, it's got a bunch of account information. It's storing, it's storing my email and my phone's cell identifier and, and associating those pieces of data points together. So that's really great. Uh, obviously, it's doing some kind of maps and GPS uh, data thing here with the Baidu map services. So that's interesting. And then I want to show here where it's adding the actual device, our actual camera, to and, and associating it to my account, which is really interesting because uh, this request I haven't really tested it this much, but one interesting thing is that it doesn't require the API token. Like a bunch of these requests, you have to set that token. You have to set the cookie token here, but this one doesn't have it. Now, maybe this like signature is doing the authentication, but I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure if that's actually what's going on here. Um, but this also taught me something interesting about the hardware. I'll have to do a, a future video about this because I've just been starting to scratch the surface of the hardware inside of this because it's really obscure. And one of the things that was really helpful when I intercepted this traffic right here is that it says the SOC is called General Plus. And that was one of my hypotheses for what the chip, the actual like hardware chip inside this device was called because the there's no clear identifiers on the outside of the chip other than this kind of like logo thing that's really obscure, never seen it before. And uh, this is one of my hypotheses is that this was the manufacturer, this company called, or this product called General Plus. And so uh, we, were confirm we were able to confirm that because we intercepted this data from the mobile app, which is kind of cool. Uh, and so... Yeah, you can see that I successfully updated that in my account that I that, that is being associated, you know, somehow with like this UUID, which I think that's just my MAC address. Uh, <laughs> so it, we can see all this data being transmitted in an insecure way back to Chinese cloud servers. So uh, that's that's just a little taste of what you can find out when you start digging into these mobile applications, right? Uh, and one of the cool things about this is that you don't need to, oftentimes you don't need the actual IoT device to do this. Uh, some of the traffic, obviously, like this last request that we just looked at, you do actually need to, to get some data off the device, put it onto the mobile app, and then see those communications to the cloud servers. But the cool thing is that most of it you don't. You can just start downloading these apps and seeing uh, where they send data, seeing if they're doing certificate validation correctly, see if these man in the middle attacks work, and uh, just play around with that data. So uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, comment down below and tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about the data that we saw uh, going to these cloud servers. Is that concerning? Do you not care? Let me know. Have a good day.